again. As you all may know from previous uh, visits, my name is Glenn. I'm excited to be ex I'm excited to be telling you about a new feature we have in Top Producer X that just went live last night. And of course, as always, I have the irreplaceable Christine, who's going to be helping us with questions and answers. Please do know that this is interactive. I love hearing your questions and love hearing what you have to say about software. And we can take any time to do questions. I do like to try to save it for the end. But the first thing I like to do is to make sure everybody can hear me. So I'm oddly able to take my sweater off right now. Here where we live, it's an extreme heat wave again, or otherwise known as summer. And because I live in a three-story house and I'm in the basement, my air conditioning is kicked in so much that I feel like I'm freezing. So I got to take the sweater off first time in days, so the air conditioning hasn't kicked in. But I'm wondering, is anybody else having these first world problems as well, where you're complaining about the cold because you're air conditioning? Just a little funny thing to throw out there to see if uh, people can hear me and uh, make sure that we're all on the same page and getting ready to go. And is my video coming across? I don't see it on my own screen. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Christine. I've got a new computer set up because I'm a geek and I like to play with everything. So it is a little bit moved around and I'm just trying a new setup. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully it works out well. Armand, I understand that one totally. My wife is in control of the the temperature, the thermostat. So I just nod and uh, smile. So I get where you're coming from. All right, everybody, it looks like everything is working well and we can get going. So today, new, brand new feature just added in last night, something you've all been asking for. It was a known feature in 8i that is now in X. So let me and Christine today introduce you to lead response plan in top producer X CRM. Yes, very excited. This has been something you all have been asking for. Because, you know, it is good to be able to get something out there, especially on your new prospects and new leads. Because we got this uh, source from 2021 National Association Realtors Profile of Home Buyers and Sellers. You'll notice it's consumers are looking at properties online for about eight weeks. They're not just automatically looking and then reaching out to a realtor. This means that they've already got some information, got some background, got some ideas. So being able to be the one that wants to help and having a systematic automated plan is always going to make it so that you're at the forefront. Again, something you have all asked us for, and we wanted to make it the best. So as we have here, competition for leads is hotter than ever. So why don't we ensure you have a way to respond quickly and consistently? That's the that's the key word. Consistently is always going to make it so that you're top of the game. So let's show you how we're doing this. <laughs> so like we say, let's meet the automated lead response plan in Top Producer X. We have done it where you've got eight, to eight touch points on day one using various contact methods from text, email, market snapshot report, and phone calls. Now, for anybody who's in Canada, please know you're going to have to just mark done or just remove the text from there. We still haven't gotten the texting capability in Top Producer X here in Canada yet. Hopefully one day, I just don't know about that, but you'll still have all the rest of them. So it's gonna just take one little piece out that hopefully, like I say, we can get back to you. But for now, just don't, don't have that one. Once you go through this whole plan that we've created, and it's, it's a really great plan, it's really been designed well, once you go through it, you've got it set up to have a solid nurturing of that lead. So whether or not they're going to be working with you right now or down the road, you're going to have everything set up, ready and prepared for them. Now, if you're looking at this image here on the side, you're going to notice lead received, then two minutes, a text, 12 minutes, send a market snapshot. How cool is that? The reason I bring that up is timing is everything. 
So depending on when you're communicating with your contacts is going to tell you how the conversion is. Now, perfect, another, uh, another stat, which was actually brought from, <laughs> I forgot how to speak, which we got from coschedule.com. Sending emails at the right time can increase conversions by 53%. 53%. I mean, how amazingly awesome is that? Half of your leads are going to convert if you do it at the right times. So that's what we've been working on. Now, you'll notice here, got a typical lead traditional response tool. On day one, it's going to send a market snap or market report. Day two, you're going to give them a call. Day three, you're going to give them a follow up call. What if I told you? You can schedule your touch points up to the minute. I know, mind blown. I, I saw this and I was like, this is awesome. So let's say the lead comes in. As soon as they come in, or you can schedule this right away, there's a text sent out. 10 minutes later, the market snapshot report is going to be notified to you to send this. After the snapshot has been gone, 12 minutes later, you're going to get an email sending it out to the client to say, here's the, the snapshot. This is what it does. This is what it explains for you. 20 minutes after that, you're going to be told, you're going to be reminded, let's give them a call. And then 50 minutes after that, a follow-up text. Now, how cool is that? I mean, that one, when I, I saw it, I'm like, I had to let that one sink in because now instead of just saying, all of these tasks are going to happen today. They're telling me at what, what timing. So it'll help that initial timing so that you get the right reaction, right response, and right information to your client at the perfect times. I mean, how, how cool is that, right? I mean, you're allowed to get, you're able to schedule it so it works on your timeline plus your clients. No more just having it come up in the morning, now it'll come up at the time. So, I mean, this is something we've, we've never had before. This is hopefully, you'll all agree with me, a revolutionary new addition and a great addition to everything that's going on. This will help you get everybody taken care of on time and in time. So why don't we see how this goes in action? So you're all busy. You're hanging out, or hanging out, not hanging out. You're with your clients. Your phone, of course, you've got it down beside you, but upside down, makes a little beep. You just got a new lead. So as soon as that happens, an email and a text is being sent on your behalf. So we'll use like this example here. It says, hi, Frank, I got your priority or your property inquiry, and we'll give you a call shortly to discuss. Thanks, Terry. Now, I would say a priority inquiry, but property inquiry is probably better, right? But that goes out right away. 10 minutes later, I'm going to get a little prompt to remind me to send a market snapshot to my client. Once they get that, they're going to see what's going on in their area, price-wise, value-wise, see what's selling, what's not selling. Two minutes after that report, automatically, oh, yeah, two minutes. I thought I said 20 earlier. Okay. I may have read something wrong. But right after, anyways, right, right after, you're going to have this email sent out. One that explains what's going on, how it works, and what's going on with the system. So this is a great way to just have that follow-up. And, you know, this also is something to get them involved and also keep them on you. When they're getting that market snapshot, they're always going to know what's going on in their area and know to contact you when they have questions. And after you've had a chance to wrap up with your clients, you can now get a notification to give your client, a, this new client, a call. And I say client because you've already started things with them. Once you call them, they're going to be so happy and impressed that they are going to want to work with you. So this is all just quick. This was all done within the period of, let's say, 50 minutes you have probably just created a new contact and new client in 50 minutes with not having to do all that much at all. Meanwhile, you're already serving another client. So how cool is that? 
So let's take a look at how this looks because we did one yesterday. Now I will say that I am one of the agents out there and I'm helping Christine find a new place. So I got the lead, it came through. Here's my text. Yesterday I sent one to say, any questions about the report or any properties? And then I got your property inquiry and I'll call you shortly. These were both sent automatically. I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything with this. Then I go to my tasks. If I turn off the incomplete and just show the complete, all of these have already been taken care of, hands off by me. I literally haven't done anything. Christina and I were playing with this yesterday. We set this up, neither one of us have done anything. Now, there is the part where I say we haven't done anything, but there is things that need to be done. So I'm overdue on sending the snapshot. So I've got my reminder here. We would go to snapshots, we'd send one. Let's see here, uh, da, da, da. bear with me just a second. So let me verify that postal code or zip code. Nine eight two three zero. My mistake. Because I have the Northwest um, MLS as a test. That's the one in Washington. I have to use a zip code from that area. We've got all the other information in here. I mean, you can change minimum beds and baths to something that's more appropriate. And then you can do a quick preview just to make sure there are listings. I don't see any. This is where I'm going to go back and just. Let's just do a blank all encompassing just to see because we don't know exactly what she's looking for. Why is it not giving me any? Okay. Oh, helps if I select a state. Let's try Washington. No, it'll still work if you, Sammy Arif, I just happened to notice your question out of the corner. You actually can still use it if you don't have snapshot. You just don't use the snapshot. It would be like how I said at the beginning for a Canadian customer, we don't have access to text messaging. So you wouldn't use the text message. You would just remove the snapshot items. Now going to spam, uh, that is something that is being worked on. We don't have as many reports of items going to spam. So hopefully that is, is gone. I'd hate to see everything going to spam, but hopefully it's taken care of and I wonder if my MLS is not connected right here. Let me try something. The zip code, nope. Okay. Let's just try the zip code. Maybe it's got a different MLS or it just doesn't like what I'm putting in there. Okay, technical error, technical technician error. Let's call it technician error, right? Let me just double check my MLS. Ah, so it's invalid at the moment. Let me just go like this and it'll come up and work again. At least it should. Thank you, Jim. If mine, if mine doesn't work, I will try that again for sure. This is part of the new updates with our, our market or with our MLS connections. Sometimes it does things like this every now and then. Let me just make sure that I can get mine working. And then we shouldn't have any problems going forward. I'm betting I've got my password wrong. This just shows that even we technicians forget to do things properly now and then. There we go. Yeah, I had my, <laughs> I had my address wrong. That's hilarious. At least I find it hilarious. Okay, Jim, I'm gonna try that specific zip code you gave me there. So again, we'll put in 98.6 and let's see what's on the listings. So we'll take this down to zero, zero, no minimum price. Just for giggles, I will put this in here as well. Huh?
let's just take one that it gives me. Preview listings. Okay, for some reason, I'm not getting any listings today. We will, but I'll try one more. And if not, I'll keep, I'll go on because this is just a minor part of it. Okay. Anyways, I'll have to check that. It's something with my account, obviously, that I've done wrong. So we will get that fixed. And then what we would do is, so you would send the snapshot. I'll go back to my tasks here. Sorry, technician brain, I see something wrong. I want to fix it. Now, you can just mark it done. Send snapshot. We'll follow up. And then, now here's a really important part. If you want to stop the plan here until you talk to the customer again, this is where you do it. Stop the lead response plan. If you turn it on, this will stop anything else going out. Because we didn't actually send a snapshot, I'm not going to turn that on, but I'll save my wrap up. So once that is done, these other options now are going to go through. So let's take a look at the whole lead response plan. You've got it all here. And again, I'm sorry that the uh, snapshot thing didn't work on that. It is one thing I'll deal with that, but you've got all these things here, Call follow up call to discuss. So I would have done this yesterday. I would have done the follow-up text, would have gone after. So we've got everything going here without any issues aside from that. But let's take a look at a couple of the other items that we have involved with the with this. So now, one of the parts that is the coolest is, like I said, we have a really good plan set up for this. But I'm going to show you where and how you can customize it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to tell you right now, the plan is amazing. The one thing we like to say is, hey, grab a little bit of yourself into it. You don't want to just use ours all the time. This one, though, I'm pretty cool on. But put a little bit of yourself in. And you can also add to it. You don't have to just follow our advice and how many texts or emails to send. I mean, you can set up an unlimited number of texts. We don't actually have a limit for you. So you would go in here and take care of that and then do not auto reply. So let me go back into here and under task plans manager. Oh, absolutely, Dave. Once I get done uh, going through everything, I'll go through the actual setup. Thank you, I appreciate that. Dave Wilbur Abril says, could you set up on a new lease so we can see how, how we could set up? Absolutely. So one of the things when you browse your templates, you'll find a new lead response plan. As you can see, <clears throat> we already have it in the account and it'll be under the lead response one here. And if you wanna take a look at it and see what's on it, you just click on it. Now you're gonna see the first day right away. <clears throat> you got a lot going on here and it'll help you get everybody organized real quick. Sorry, just need a quick drink. The next day, you just text see if they have any questions and email. Uh, to see the property or any others. You check in with their lead again, check to see if they'd like to meet on day two. Day three, a third text check-in. Day four is another email, see if they wanna see a sneak peek of new properties. And a phone call, see if anything else has caught their eye. By day five, you've got an idea. You can set them up on a long-term nurture plan of your own or one of ours to let them see exactly what you're gonna do. So this is where you'll be able to determine if they're gonna be a future, future client or if they're gonna be one you're gonna start working with right now. So that's right there under the task plans manager. Now, let me just close a couple of these tabs. I don't know, wait, no, I do need those. So we'll go back over here. We'll go back to this one. <laughs> now, how to create the actual plan or to who gets what and when. The scene is too small. Is it my, my screen is too small to read? Okay, hang on. Let me see if I can go back and uh, increase this a bit. Does that work better? For John Stallings and Katie, my screen is still too small for you to read or is it because of the, uh, the video?
Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to keep going. If remember, you will get a copy of this afterwards. If uh, that way, you can slow it down, move it in, and look at different items differently. Now, assigning a customized rule to each of your lead providers is easy to set up, easy to work, and easy to work with. So I'm going to go back to the auto apply area. You'll notice a new line in your settings. Now remember, this is all going to be found under settings. What you'll see here is lead response rules. You click on that. You'll notice we have one here already created that you would new lead from website, sources, test, and it's a seller. And then you add the response plan. Now, this is not the only options you have. You can create a new one. We'll call this uh, lead plan two. Now, if I want it from a referral, when the source is one of my referrals, I can put it in and you just find your plan like this. You do that and you've got a second one. That should get it going. And like, I, like you see, that was super easy to create. Let's do one for realtor.com. Find our source, realtor.com. We'll say this one is, this one's for seller. Lead response plan, save rule. So there you go. Now I've got three different rules that will automatically open up and be set up for the, the client to get. Now, I just got a message from Jim Jacobson. He's asking me to try to make my screen full without my picture to see if that would work. Let me see. I've never, let me see if I can, if I stop video, if that will help. Does that help? I know my face is not one to be looked at often. So hopefully by turning that off, it will help it out a little bit. So now that I've got this set up and working, you'll be able to have issue. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. You'll be able to have these so that anything coming in will work without a problem. Yeah, I, I think that is something it would have to be taken care of on the other side, Gene. This is just my setup. I, I use Zoom just to chat with you folks on these uh, webinars. I'll have to look into something for that so that in the future I can actually do that. It looks like the covering my face doesn't really do anything. So we'll look into that in the future. So again, as um, I see Christine has answered a couple of questions for us. I'll look at it here. Um, Marta asked, will market snapshots still go out automatically? Uh, Christine did mention that you have to send the snapshot yourself. This is just one of the few things you have to do yourself. Uh, let's see, Cynthia, are you able to edit the timing if you wanted a day or two between automated responses? Absolutely, Cynthia. As Christine said, everything is editable. Everything is adjustable. I mean, if I were to go over here and open it up, so we've got the text the next day. If you click on this button, and let me go back, I do this quick and I know it all the time. Right here where it says day one, you got your pencil icon, edit task. You can set it as a time task or not, or just set it to go one day after. And you just change it as normal. Whenever you change any type of plan, you just put the day in, after or on. You can have it from a previous task or the start date and prioritize it as needed. So yes, you can make edits as you go. <laughs> Excuse me. So one of the questions we did have is somebody would like to see how to add this to a new lead. Now, I don't have any lead providers. So I'm going to do kind of what I call a role play and just say that, and this is a dark eagle is a nickname I use all the time, but let's just say this is a new lead that just came through to me. It will automatically, instead of me having to hit apply plan here, no, it won't even let me. Perfect. Let me try something. I'm going to send myself a new lead. 
So let me create a lead real quick. So I just need this email address real quick. Bear with me just a second. Now, one of the advantages is because I've now set up a couple of the other rules and created them, I can now put one of the sources in as that. I'll just leave this my source here. Uh, bear with me just a sec. All right, so I have sent myself a new lead and we'll see, it should come in pretty quick. But once it does, this new lead, assuming I send it to my right account because I have too many. Okay, it's on the way. Let me just do one of those tricks I do every now and then just to force things to work, sign out and sign back in. It hasn't got there. So once it comes in, it will automatically go. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to take a look at questions here. Okay. So John, like, like Christine said about the junk spam, we are working on that. I think you and I have had a couple of conversations about this. I, we all know that this is something and we are working on getting a fix. A lot of the changes to our servers are actually working towards fixing that. So hopefully we're going to be able to get back up to a, I would say, hopefully a 90% success. I will never say 100% because there's always room for improvement. I'd love to see it 100%. That would be pretty cool. But for now, let's just say 90%. Um, yeah, Marta, is, Marta asked, it used to be that when we got a lead, the snapshot goes out automatically. As Christine said, we're looking to get that one set up for you automatically and take care of it without any issues. There are some MLSs though that don't allow that. And so we took that into account and that's why it's like this right off the bat. However, we are always, always very happy to hear any type of suggestions and feedback and we will try to implement whatever we can. So I appreciate that's a good, good thought. Uh, Philomena, does this work with top producer 8i? Uh, as I see, this is a Top Producer X item. So Top Producer X is the one that got this. It has the capabilities to do this that 8i didn't have all of the capabilities. That's why we did it in X. X is running on newer and faster and better technology. So it would have the ability to do this. And it looks like I sent the email to the wrong place. So, so what'll happen, I'm gonna use the Christine one because it worked yesterday. What would happen is Christine created a lead for herself. It came in and it had the source on it of test. So we go down here, it had source of test. As soon as it gets that source, it's now gonna go through and look at lead response rules. So new lead from the web, buyer test it's automatically gonna be able to see that it hits the criteria. So the source is test, we wanna add this lead response plan. So once that lead came through, they instantly had it added and it was put into the, oops, helps if I go to Christine's. It was instantly put into the tasks with the lead response plan. And then it started doing all the tasks that were right here. So she did this at 11.30 yesterday. You'll notice it was taken care of, aside from the send market snapshot, right in order. It's as simple as that. It goes through, it takes care of it, and it adds it on. So let's go. Now, the one thing we like is the smart timing. 
So you'll notice I had showed one where when I did the market snapshot, it asked me if I wanted to pause. Well, it actually does this within the plan itself. Smart timing, as we've got it labeled, means that if you've sent something out that will require a response back, it's going to pause that plan. Once the actual response comes in, you're going to have all the information there and be able to jump back to them. And I'm jumping too fast. <laughs> You'll notice we've changed a couple of things from last response and last action. So. I can now say that the most recent thing I did for Christine was 15 minutes ago when I did the, uh, the snapshot. If I wanted to pause the, the system, it would wait until a response comes in from her. Once that response comes in, it will reactivate the plan. So let's go here and we'll try another task that I haven't closed out and we'll do that one. So follow up call here. If I were to pause this now and say, called out, miss her, and we'll call again. We'll use this as, as a good example. So you're trying to reach the person and you get their, their voicemail. So I'm going to schedule a follow-up uh, later today. And we'll just say, second call attempt. Now, with the lead response plan being paused, it will stay paused until I'm actually able to call her and get this fixed up. Now, that is, that's smart. Now, you don't have to worry about, okay, I haven't got a hold of this person. I don't want everything else to go out. It's just as simple as clicking pause the system. That way, it does, again, puts you as the point of being the top realtor and the person who actually is using technology to the best of its abilities. So that'll keep it going and keep everything working the way you need it. The smart timing is one of the coolest things that we could add in that along with the being able to do timed events after a specific item. It's, I'm really excited about this. So I think I'm, my brain is going faster because this is a very cool new addition. And it's one that we really wanted to get there. So forgive me if my enthusiasm is actually making me jump around a bit. It is pretty cool what we're doing with this. So we, I know, Tiffany. I know that's what I'm going to go back. Do you have a specific thing, Tiffany? She says I'm too fast. I'm aware. Like I said, I'm excited about this. What was something that I went too fast over that you'd like me to go back to? Because I will definitely go back. Plus, keep in mind, you are going to get a copy of this with the recording. Okay. Forgive me, Tiffany. Like I said, I'm excited about this one. It is a very cool addition and one that we're really hoping to have out there. Uh, Jean messaged a question. I'd like to know if she can get a copy of this webinar. Absolutely, Jean. It will be sent out to you. We send them out all the time. Christine prepares to send them because she knows I'm fast because I'm excitable whenever I'm talking about something cool. But I'm, I'm going to go back over here and go back over to this. So again, a couple of key features. Your task plans manager now has a lead response option. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Christine. I'm glad you and I are on the same page. Um, You'll notice when you go into your task plans manager here in your settings, and I'm, I'm gonna slow myself down for just a couple of minutes, so bear with me. From your main page, your settings down on the bottom left, or if you need to, go up to your picture or the silhouette up in the top and go to settings. Then over here to task plans manager. And for Judy, are the plans tasks already set up in X for us to import? If you don't see it here, like when you go to Task Plans Manager, click on Lead Response. If it's not there, Browse Templates, click on this, and Lead Response Plan is right there. You just click on that, and it'll give you an option to customize it, or it'll just download it to your account. So as I already have it, well, let me see. I'm going to customize. Uh, you want to use the same templates. 
you got a preview of how everything is in there. You can here you can even change the lead response and stop lead response when lead replies or don't stop. So you can stop it when they they reply, and that's the pausing, or you can just have it keep going. Uh, we will call this second lead response plan. And then you just have the description. Save plan. Okay, now we close out of that. You'll notice second lead response plan is there. So that is set up and ready to go. Now, to be able to activate the plan, you need a rule. So again, over here, lead response rules. And I just set something up so that I can actually allow you to follow where I'm clicking. And then over here, add lead response rule. Let's call this one Zillow. Now, when the source, now you'll notice here, if you just type another source like website, it will create a new source for you. As I'm saying this is for Zillow, I'm just going to use Zillow. Contact type is a seller or buyer. I'm just going to go with buyer. And then I just click on, you'll notice all I had to do is click here. And then I will take my lead response plan. And then save rule. And now any leads I get from Zillow, because I'll have the source Zillow, will automatically be put onto that plan. Once you get the plan, you just go to the contact. And of course, they will be a new contact. So you go to that contact, you go to your tasks, and it'll be under all tasks. Here's all my complete ones and my incomplete for today. So yeah, we're good to go and that's how it'll work for you. So let me know if that helped. I, again, forgive a guy for getting excited. It's not, it's been a while since I've been able to showcase something cool. I hope my slowed down version there actually helps a little bit better. And actually clicking on that thing that allows me to show you where I'm clicking. <laughs> You're not seeing any of the, okay. So if you're in top producer X, Judy, settings. So click on settings here, task plans manager. And up here, you've got a button for browse. Once you're there, click in here, just click anywhere within this option here. You'll notice how my little circular thing is moving. If you click anywhere, it should bring them up. If you're not seeing them, I would actually say reach out to our support team, have them take a look at it and see what's going on with it. But it should be just a click and then show up. I'm glad that worked better, Tiffany. Oh, no problem, Judy. Yeah, Tiffany, it's um, like I said, we don't get we haven't had a chance to showcase something new in a while. So this one actually had both me and Christine really excited yesterday because it's uh, such a cool feature that we've been wanting to share. So thank you. I appreciate you telling me to slow down. That is something that when I get excited, I have trouble doing, but that was cool. I'm glad, I'm glad this uh, demonstration went a little bit better. I'm glad you were able to find it in your uh, settings there, Judy. So hopefully everything is working. Uh, let me get back to our screen here. One of the things we can mention here is we're always here to help you. I am part of this support team. We have a whole group of them. I am part of the tier two support. So if it is something that the frontline team can't assist, I would be one of the people that would get sent to. So if you want to get a hold of us, go over to talkproducer.com slash campus and then click on the chat now. Now I'm going to do something one of my associates does which I should have done in the past. If I can get to the right spot. Here we go. We're gonna add a new window. Oh, campus. 
right here. Click on chat now and you would get one of our very helpful and very friendly associates, Akriti. And you will notice there has there is a option here. If one of these items is what you're looking for, please click on it. You can get to our sales, our support, or our billing teams. And then it will reach out to them. It might ask another question, but this is just a quick bot to get you into the right place. So that's a good way to get a hold of our team for assistance whenever you need it. Let's go back over here. Uh, I have another question here. Oh, Gene, thank you. I appreciate you saying I did a good job. I very much appreciate that. Um, we do have our email at supportedtopproducer.com. And as you just saw, our support site of topproducer.com slash campus. So that has been our introduction to the cool new lead, lead software we have. Anytime you wanna take a look at that, just like I say, jump into your top producer, settings, and task plans manager, lead response. I keep forgetting, click here, click here. And then if you wanna make any edits on it, you just click on it and then make the changes here. So again, You've got it here, click here. You wanna make an edit, you click on the edit task. For lead, read, lead response rules, forgot how to talk. Just click over here. You can take a look at them. If you need to edit them, again, just click on this to edit. So there we go. So I do see a um, couple of questions. Dave, can I inquire about the Five Street add-on? Is this some kind of lead management or lead response add-on? Five Street is a different system. So like uh, Christine said, we can have someone read it, reach out to you and discuss it. It will help you. Uh, Five Street can also be great for teams. That way you can distribute your leads easier. This one here is for once you're into the top producer X. So I hope that answers, but we will have someone reach out to you. Was there any other questions? Like I said, I know I went quickly, but thank you for Tiffany to get me to slow down. I think I explained that a little bit better. But if you do still have questions, please feel free to ask. I am happy to assist and happy to answer them. I usually have an hour booked for my time on here, so I still have 15 minutes if you need. If not, <laughs> Cynthia from Cynthia says my fiance is from Canada, Ottawa, eh? <laughs> Cynthia, I actually purposely try not to say A much. I know it is a normal part of my vocabulary. Now, I've been called out many times by our clients down in the US when I say A and they automatically go, oh, you're Canadian. So I purposely try not to, although we love being able to help you all from up here in Canada. And because my wife is American and she's actually from Texas. I actually say y'all every now and then, and she usually throws something at me. <laughs> so let me see, Gene, I have leads sent by me, my reload department via email to me. How can I get them into TPX? So Gene, like I was doing before where I would have them email to the uh, my lead. If they're going in through your myleads.io email address still, they will go through. I just, like I say, I realize I forgot to put the D at the end of the email address, even though I clicked copy. I did type something out. So that didn't go out right. And I didn't have the right information on my side for the testing info I have. So if they email it to you with all the lead information in place, it will automatically go into Top Producer X. And like Christine, always got my back, has an article on connecting the lead sources. That will help you, that'll get them in, and that will allow you to get all your leads from any location across. So I hope that answers, and thank you, Christine, for always having my back. Uh, presently, Gene, that is actually the best way. I know you. he asked if there's another way besides that. Presently, uh, we are always looking for improvements, but that presently is the right way. Uh, Jim, go Kraken. Uh, being from Vancouver, I gotta say go Canucks, but I am happy we have that rivalry now between our two um, 
our two countries and two cities since you're all, we're almost sister cities, right? Um, see, that's a really good question, Cynthia. She asked if, will we automatically get this chat log with links after this is done? I'm not 100% sure if they actually go out with the links. Uh, Christine, would you have any background knowledge on that? I think it has a chat log, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm a top producer technician, not a Zoom tech, so I don't know about that. Um, Marta Stasic, when my leads come to the lead IO, the email of the lead does not go through. Is there a fix for this? Marta, I would have to ask where it's coming from because most most lead forwarding locations will grab an email. Granted, there are some out there where an email address is not required. This is something that could be looked into. And honestly, if you're having a lot of that, please reach out to the chat team. Just go down to the chat now down here, click on it, and Evan would probably be able to give you an answer or whichever agent you got. But give that a try for me, Marta. Hopefully they can help you out. John Puller, can, how can we set up emails or texts to go out on the holiday like Christmas on the 25th day of December as an automatic task? So you want to add a task. So here, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a little bit outside of the normal realm here, John, but I'm going to do that for you. Along the side here, you click on tasks. You would add a task. Keep forgetting to press that button. And then you would add a contact. So in this case, I'm going to add, you'll notice if I just start typing, I can get Christine. I want to send a automated task. Whoops. Let me go back to this year. Instead of jumping to a new year, we will go here. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go to December. <coughs> I can set that to go, an email. I can grab a template and let's see if I've created any holidays. Okay, I do. I have a happy holiday email. I can preview it here. You'll notice it's got her name in there and then mine saying all the best. And then I just save the task after I put a title in. Now, if I go to my custom date range, and I'll have to do this because of the fact that, so we'll do December 1st. Yeah, it will be in a second, one second. You'll see right there, by setting my date range to show me December 1st through 31st, I can see my message to Christine will go out on that date. Okay, now I see. Cynthia, I wonder if a big group message might be viewed by the internet gods as spam. I don't know. I just know enough to be dangerous. So when you say a big group message, one of the reasons your messages are probably going to go out individually and one at a time is going to allow you to avoid that. You're not going to end up getting, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, if, if you're getting 30 or 40 leads at a time and it's setting up, you could be sending out 30 or 40 messages all at once. Now, if you're doing that, awesome, rock on. And I'm hoping that it's making you super, super successful. Uh, we are, we haven't run into that. So it might be something for me to set down as something to keep an eye on. So that's actually uh, a really good, good report. Good idea. So thanks, Cynthia. Um, Judy, uh, when I'm in a contact and try to apply a plan, there are no options. Uh, I'm just going to grab one. Oops, helps if I go to tasks. When you click on a Click on tasks here, then apply plan, and you'll get no match. Yes, so, huh, okay. Uh, Judy, that's something I'll have looked into because that makes 
that should be bringing up some of my plans. So I'll have that looked into and hopefully we'll have an increase on that. Let me see. Uh, John Puller. Okay, so I've gone over that. Jerry and Mike, um, you're both mentioning about the white on white. We have mentioned that to our developers as well. It is on, and I'm pretty sure it's on our roadmap. I just don't have a timeline. I personally, I prefer putting everything on my computer in dark mode as well. So I will hopefully get a chance. I'm going to click on my feedback icon here and see if it works for me today. No, it's because I'm using a testing account today that my feedback isn't working. But what I would say is give us your feedback. Click on the feedback item and let us know. Uh, Christine, yeah, she's uh, already on that. And Marta, the mass email to more than 1,000. The reason it's at the level it is, is because that was a, well, we've got a, an agreement with more email providers. Now, keep in mind, you're using your email providers servers. So Gmail, Microsoft, Apple, Yahoo, I mean, just AOL, just to name a few. The agreement with them was that we weren't going to overload their servers. Plus, they also have limits in place, too. So by doing a group email that only sends to 100 at a time, it's going to allow for a couple of things. More targeted marketing to specific people in a specific area. And also, you're not going to overload the server. I, I agree. Or I get where you're coming from. When I say I agree, I understand that a lot of people may have larger databases with more people in a specific area that you may be farming and trying to get them interested. So if that's one of those things, again, as we always like to mention, we have our feedback option down here. Add your voice to the people who are looking for that. Maybe we'll be able to get it. I don't know. It's not something, and as much as I hate to say I don't know, uh, it's something that I haven't actually got an answer to because I probably haven't asked the right place. But I do know there was an actual reason for the initial way of setting it up. So hopefully we will have something in the future. Another exciting new feature me and Christine will get to explain to you and tell y'all. So I hope, I hope we've been able to answer your questions. Does anybody else have any other questions for us today? I know you have very, uh, your time is very valuable. I don't want to uh, take you up. Uh, Cynthia, if you've previously worked with a client, they log into Realtor with an email, does that lead automatically come to you as opposed to another Realtor in your MLS area? When you say log into Realtor, you mean Realtor.com, I'm, I'm going to assume. Uh, I honestly don't know how leads through Realtor.com work. When top producer and realtor.com were associated, I wasn't part of the team working with realtor.com. I've always just been top producer and on the technical side. I would hope that it would, mem it would memorize who it has spoken to most recently and get back to you, but I, I don't have an honest, I don't have an answer for you, Cynthia. I'm so sorry. I wish I did. That is something you may have to follow up with them on. Uh, one quick question. The active listings do not populate in the transaction section from Mike. When you say active listings, oh, so Mike, one of those things, if you wanna click on settings here, we have another special one called UI settings. You click on that and then click on transactions. You'll notice you can set the listing dates. Now I'm gonna reset mine. They should be, 365 before and after. So it has a 730 day period, so two years. So it should be showing. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and I'm wondering, I'm thinking outside the box here, you do still have to pull them in. They're not gonna automatically sync with your MLS and pull in all transactions. It's just gonna show the active listings. Now, when I go back to transactions, you should have two listings. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mike, for that. Listings from top producer 8i are not going to come in. It's just closings. You'll notice it says import 8i closings. 
because of the differences between how we do transactions within X and listings and closings in 8, 8i, we weren't able to bring in the listings, anything that's active. Recommendation is to finalize them in 8i and then bring import 8i closings. That way you don't have to redo them over in X. It was something we tried to do, but we did find that the technology wouldn't communicate. So we had to find the best workaround. I, I know that's not ideal. I do apologize. We did everything we could to do it, but it unfortunately does have to go that way. So once it's completed in 8i, go ahead and import it. You can click import 8i closings as many times as you need. It does have a smart check and it will not duplicate your listings or your closings, I mean. And then depending on how many closings you have, it's also going to be in that 730 day range, one year before, one year after. Uh, I don't have any on this account to show, but you would be able to, if you need to, you can easily jump back. Um, I was working with somebody who has listings back to 2000 and nine the other day so they could go all the way here set it for that range and it'll bring everything in so i hope that answers some questions now that i've gotten into technical mode and not uh presenter mode i'm obviously less excitable aren't i <laughs> i do still get excited about tech but the new features they're really fun Okay, so I'll give it another little bit. I'm, again, we really, really appreciate you coming and hanging out with us when we have new features to show. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Jim, very quick. How about listings that sold and I have not put in data? Can I still bring those closings over? Sorry, Jim. Uh, they've sold in 8i and you haven't brought them over to X. If you click on that, it'll bring over. You can't go from X to 8i though. And I hope I'm reading that right. Clean my glasses. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's what I'm I'm getting. Uh, Marta, thank you for joining today. Uh, Judy. Oh, okay. So let me go back here. So for both Judy and Jim, just click on import 8i closings. Just anytime you click on that, um, if you do create them in, in 8i, they will come over. You just click it and then you may have to adjust the date range here to see them because again, it only goes back one year. So any closings you have that are older would go back farther. Okay, so I hope that's got it. I think Christine is doing the um, Emmy Award show flashing lights at me to say it's time. So hopefully we've answered all your questions. We've been able to show you a very cool new feature. I know I answered extra questions, but hopefully you all stay as excited about the lead response rules as we are. And let us know any questions. As always, reach out to our support team. We have got you and we will take care of anything you need. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everybody else, for sticking around for this hour. As always, it is a pleasure and an honor to be able to spend time with you. Hope you all have a great day, and uh, bye for now. See you in the next one. Take care.